Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about qualities that I look for in a potential President of the United States, and qualities that I would want to see in an ideal President. I want to make this a strictly nonpartisan video, so I'm hoping that this can reach you whether you are liberal, conservative, or somewhere in between, whether you identify as a Republican, a Democrat, or an Independent. I'm not going to focus on issues on the left-right spectrum, I'm going to be talking more about character and aspects of how a person communicates that I think are critically important. I think the number one issue for me in a president is I want someone who is highly respectful in how they communicate. I want them to speak respectfully of their political opponents especially, I want them to speak respectfully of people in their own party that they may not agree with fully. I want them to speak respectfully of other world leaders, including in situations where they might have some points of tension with those leaders. Nowadays, unfortunately, I've seen many candidates rise into positions of power and get both get elected to office and doing well in primary elections, doing well in polls, who have really disrespectful dialogue, a really disrespectful way of talking about other people. For example, they engage in personal attacks and name-calling, and they grossly misrepresent people with opposing political views. I think it's really important that, for me, a leader is someone who sees the good in the people who they disagree with. And this leads into the next point, which I think is really important. I think it's really important for a leader, including a president, to be a good listener and to be able to thoroughly and accurately understand people with viewpoints other than their own. People have good reasons for believing what they do, and I think there are good reasons for holding both liberal or conservative viewpoints on a particular issue. And I found this when I talk to people and listen to them. If people explain where they're coming from, I'm usually able to better understand them. And if I'm able to do that, I don't want to elect a leader who seems deficient in that. Like, that's really troubling to me if a leader misrepresents the reasoning and the viewpoints of people in the opposing party. I think that that shows a lack of intelligence, a lack of listening skills, and those are qualities that I think are critically important in a leader and affect their ability to work with other people and build a consensus. And the last thing I want to talk about, I think it's really important for me that a leader is is kind of independent from the two-party system. I don't really like when leaders are very strictly tied to one party. I really don't like the idea of party loyalty. And I'm troubled at how many of the elected officials nowadays are exhibiting this really strict party loyalty. Like, if you look in Congress, you have people voting very strictly only with their party, and they're not deviating from it very often. And that bothers me a lot. And when it comes to the President, I think it's critically important that we have someone who doesn't exhibit that kind of party loyalty, who instead is wanting to focus on the issues and wanting to push us away from this sort of Democrats versus Republicans, us versus them kind of deal. Like, unfortunately, we live in a two-party system, so it seems like in the near future it's unlikely that anyone is going to get elected who isn't affiliated with one of those two major parties, and that bothers me. But, given that that's a constraint that we're working with, I would strongly prefer that whoever we elect isn't really tightly allied to one party or the other. So, that's what I have to say. Um, I hope that this can influence you when it comes to voting. Um, there's an election coming up. Obviously, there's not a presidential election coming up for another two years or so, so this is kind of long-term thinking. But I just wanted to throw this stuff out there because sometimes I feel a little frustrated and I want to focus on positive things. So I hope that this has given you some inspiration and that you can find a more ideal candidate to vote for, especially in the next presidential primary. Yeah, that's what I have to say. Thank you.